Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Tuesday, April the 5th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful, encouraging Word of God. And as we left off yesterday looking at the Son of Man being the Lord even of the Sabbath day, I'm thankful uh, that though the Sabbath day was the day uh, of the last day of the week on the seventh day uh, that was to rest, that Jesus Christ arose from the grave on the first day so that there would be no confusion about how he was transitioning uh, from the old into the new, that uh, even though we still have this wonderful day where we celebrate the risen Lord of glory, we're not bound in the traditions of man. And, uh, and that's exactly what's going on here, is men have set up laws uh, to honor the law of Moses, the, mo the law uh, that thou shalt honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. But in doing so, they added all these extra laws upon there of what that meant, according to them, that you uh, could be holy and keep it uh, in retrospect. But notice what it's about to say here in verse 9. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And so now we're in the highest place where the where the the truth of the of God is supposed to be uh, being given out, where man comes to uh, make atonement for his sin, where he comes to learn about the God in whom he loves. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand, and they asked him, saying, "Is it lawful to heal on Sabbath days that they may accuse him?" Because all these extra laws they had put on the Sabbath day said so you can't work, you can't do anything uh, on the Sabbath day. Uh, but notice what it says here in verse 11. And he said unto them, What man shall there be amongst you that have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, he will not lay hold on it and lift it out. So while they had made all these laws that said you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, they had clauses in there, of course, as everybody always tries to do with laws in which they make. There's always these loopholes that they can utilize to go out and do what they want to do or what they feel like they need to do uh, regardless of the law. And that's what they did here. They made this clause where he says, even though it's not lawful for the work, there's no one who won't go out and save their sheep um, and, uh, and, uh, because you don't want to lose a sheep. But notice what he says here, verse 12. How much then is a man better than a sheep? And so they're trying to trip him up and say, is it good to heal on the Sabbath day? This man is in trouble. He's in the ditch. And he needs help. And you're saying that it's unlawful to heal? Well, I'm going to show you that I am the Lord of the Sabbath. And it's it's quite all right for men to find healing on the Sabbath day. And that's why I love church. Because men can come in from the world with their withered issues or their sickness or their diseases, uh, wh whether they be um, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, uh, and even sometimes physically, and find healing in the wonderful uh, power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the Sabbath day is for the wholeness of us. Um, just like them being hungry and eating on the Sabbath day, uh, the Lord is concerned about our wholeness, not just one particular area. But then notice what he says here in verse, uh, verse 13. Then said he to the man, stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole, just as the other one. Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him how they might destroy him, how they might destroy him. So uh, because he did this great work and they couldn't, re they couldn't um, rebut him because of the, the illustration in which he gave to them, they said, well, if we can't rebut him, we'll just remove him. We'll just get him out because he's going to mess up our authority. He's going to mess up our power that we have over the people. Verse 15, but when Jesus knew it, Jesus knew that they were going to try to destroy him, try to kill him. He withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all on the Sabbath day. He went around just healing, 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 healing on the Sabbath day. And I'm thankful that when I come to the church and I'm struggling with things in my life, that the Lord has the ability to, to heal me. He has the Lord to, to, the, to, um, to uh, speak to my issue and say, be made whole. And then verse 16, and charge them that they should not make him known. So he, he says, I'm going to do this, but don't go around spreading the words. Don't go around telling everybody about what we're doing here. Verse 17, why would he do that? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, 
So he said, there's a time frame in which I'm doing things. And this is the first part that I'm doing. Okay, this is the first part that I'm doing. I'm going around and showing my power. Notice what it says here, verse 18. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased. This is God the Father speaking about God the Son. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall show judgment to the Gentiles. So he's bringing us into this wonderful uh, uh, glorious gift of salvation and and uh, the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin. He never healed without talking about sin, and uh, and so we we know that. And and so he's always addressing the deeper issue that we have uh, more than the surface issues that we experience. And then it says, and he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets, as a bru as a bruised reed. Shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And praise the Lord, that's where he was going to Calvary, headed there to, to make an end uh, uh, of the judgment on man of sin and needing uh, to do all these things which were laid out that we might be able to have that, now putting our faith and trust in him and him alone. Uh, and finding our victory, finding our victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I love this, verse 21, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. In his name shall the Gentiles trust. No longer will we have to, to worry about man uh, leading us to God. God himself has come and led us to himself. He has drawn near to us that we might be able to draw near to him. And so I'm thankful today that I as a Gentile can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though I was not uh, born uh, of the chosen uh, uh, of God, uh, I am a chosen of God in Jesus Christ. As, uh, as the word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm thankful that when I come uh, on Sunday and I worship the risen Lord Jesus Christ, that he's there to heal me and to make me whole. And I know for a certain fact that he is going to do that in absolutely every single way. And one day, this mortal shall put on immortality and this corrupt shall put on incorruption. And so I pray that you go and you worship the Lord on the Sabbath days, on those days which Jesus Christ rose. We're not talking about the last day of the week. We're talking about the first day of the week, Sunday. Let's worship the risen Lord and let's find the healing in which we need and let us trust in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and go forth and be encouraged.